that, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I do mean over the top beautiful. 80 degree, a little bit windy December day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. That would be Wednesday, December 15th, halfway through the last month of 2021. Uh, here in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the Oasis of Freedom. And since it is Wednesday, this is when I like to check in with our uh, old buddies over at oilprice.com, which is this newsletter for energy investors, and uh, which I think is one of the great barometers of uh, some of the most honest reporting of what is going on uh, in the energy sector, oil drilling, all that stuff, uh, predictions uh, and whatnot. I find this an excellent source uh, for a reality check for some of the bright green lies out there in the mainstream media. So we're going to put this little dog down and uh, I'm just going to touch on three stories and then just go down the headlines. Uh, th this rant could go on all day. I highly advise you to uh, go on to oilprice.com and uh, subscribe to this, uh, to this newsletter. But, uh, all right. Start here at the top. World leaders have to face the truth about oil demand. What is the truth about oil demand? <clears throat> Our products make the world run. This is what Chevron's chief executive Mike Wurr said at this week's World Petroleum Congress in Houston. The statement echoed a sentiment expressed by other oil executives attending the event. Oil and gas are indispensable and will continue to be indispensable for the observable future and beyond. This is not something that a lot of people want to hear. It is certainly not what environmental organizations want to hear. It is certainly not what the Biden administration in the EU wants to hear. Well, I might argue that. Yet, it appears to, re to reflect a hard reality. Europe is now struggling with record gas prices, and yet its gas inventories are being depleted at the fastest rate in about a decade. In the U.S., gasoline prices have become a top priority for an administration that came to power with the promise to reduce the country's consumption of fossil fuels. Whether everyone likes it or not, quitting oil and gas will not be as easy as some, some, some hope. This is Amin Nasser, chief executive of Aramco, quote, I understand that publicly admitting that oil and gas will play an essential and significant role during the transition and beyond will be hard for some, but Admitting this reality will be far easier than dealing with energy insecurity, rampant inflation, and social unrest as the prices become intolerably high and seeing net zero commitments by countries start to unravel. Close quote. 
The price of electricity is already getting intolerably high in many parts of Europe that were, until recently, used to affordable and secure energy. This, unless it is tackled urgently, could indeed lead to social unrest. There have been few things more flammable than public opinion in the middle of winter amid an energy shortage and the risk of blackouts. Uh, this is, you know, the guy from Chevron quoted in the Wall Street Journal, quote, Oil and gas continue to play a central role in meeting the world's energy needs and we play an essential role in delivering them. Huh, do you think so? If the news from Europe since September is any indication, Worth is correct in his prediction. However, supply may be tight due to underinvestment, which is at least in part the result of the rush to replace oil and gas with renewable energy. Price shocks, scarcity, and energy poverty are in the cards after two consecutive years of underinvestment in the oil and gas industry. Uh, some uh, report by the International Energy Forum said this week, uh, <clears throat> this year's investment in the oil and gas industry will be around $341 billion, which, so that might sound high to somebody, is actually 23% lower than pre-pandemic investment levels at $525 billion, and that is despite rising global demand for fossil fuel commodities. <clears throat> okay, um, here is one quote about the energy crisis in Europe and Asia this winter is a preview of what we can expect in the years ahead. Uh, this would certainly not sit well with renewable energy proponents. Yes. Uh, you think so? Uh, this is IHS Markets Daniel Jurgen. Did I? I'm pretty sure I've interviewed Daniel Jurgen. Uh, quote Underinvesting in oil and gas before renewables and other low carbon technologies are ready to scale up to meet energy demand could create recurrent energy crises of the kind we saw in Asia and Europe over the last few months. He added that these crises could lead to adverse economic consequences and these in turn will in all likelihood spark the social unrest that Aramco's Nasser talked about. Uh, the big energy problem appears to be one of prematurity, the buildup of renewable generation capacity in the U.S. and Europe was accompanied by a premature retirement of fossil fuel generation capacity leaving countries short of baseload energy when they needed it. Uh, it is no coincidence that some countries such as the UK and Sweden had to restart coal plants. The premature shift 
to relying on wind and solar is leaving countries vulnerable to the weather and effectively increasing their dependence on fossil fuels. Yes. Uh, perhaps the current crunch will teach some important lessons to those willing to learn it. Otherwise, the scenario outlined uh, by Nasser and Jurgen may well materialize in the not too distant future. And then next to that one is the associated article, Investors See Peak Demand Happening Much Further in the Future, you know, than previously thought. Recovering economies this year have resulted in a robust rebound in oil demand, disproving some projections from the onset of the corona panic in 2020 that the world had already seen peak oil demand. Despite scares of new variants, lately Omicron, global oil demand is on track to reach pre-pandemic levels within months and to further rise in coming years peak oil demand is not in the cards in the near future, analysts say. Uh, oil investors surveyed by Bloomberg in November have also significantly recalibrated their expectations of peak oil demand over the past two years. Uh, then they break all uh, this down uh, where people were claiming that uh, peak oil demand was going to be February of 2021 and how that this is rising and rising and rising. But the latest survey shows a stark difference in the general timeline to peak oil demand compared to the previous four polls. Currently, just 2% of oil investors now believe peak oil demand will occur by 2025 and fewer than 40% see that peak before 2030. One third of investors expect oil demand to peak between 2025 and 2030, but another third think that peak will be sometime after 2030, some point between 2030 and 2035. The mid-2030s is currently OPEC's timeline uh, for peak oil demand. Global oil demand is expected to continue to grow into the mid-2030s after which it is set to plateau for another 10 years until 2045, according to uh, OPEC. Uh, despite expected plateauing of demand in the long run, oil will continue to be the fuel with the single largest share of the global energy mix uh, by 2045. Yep, demand is set to grow as the world still runs on fossil fuels, which account for around 60, I'm sorry, 85 percent of total global energy demand. Alright, one more story which I got a bit of a chuckle out of uh, about one of these fracking proponents asking a question. Is fracking really putting America's water supply at risk? 
the shale oil boom that began about 15 years ago enabled the fastest growth of oil and natural gas production in U.S. history. Uh, prior to Corona panic, the shale boom even enabled the U.S. to briefly achieve energy independence. Uh, the shale boom was enabled by the marriage of two technologies, horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing, the combination typically referred to as simply fracking. However, those environmentalists have long contended that fracking threatens our water supplies. But anti-fracking sentiments have spawned a great deal of misinformation about the technique. Let me just point out that more than 1.7 million wells in the U.S. have been fracked. If they were a real threat to our water supplies, it would be readily apparent. Well, I, I think uh, some people would say it is readily apparent. But, well, of course, that guy is saying it's an absolute, that there, there's nothing in, in these statistics to show that, it, that this claim is true. But a couple of things are true. One is that an improperly fracked well could result in contamination. Yes, for example, if an oil formation was fracked in close proximity to a freshwater aquifer, it could result in a migration of fracking fluids or hydrocarbons into the water. Of course, this is well known, and operators don't want to lose fluids into an aquifer, so this is never purposely done. Yes. Second, it is possible for contamination to take, to take place somewhere else in the fracking supply chain. The public may blame fracking when in fact it is a different issue altogether. For example, if a truck hauling fracking fluids, you know, to or from a fracking well, hmm, and dumps its cargo into a river, opponents will be quick to point the finger at fracking. Huh. I can't imagine why. Okay, the truck full of fracking fluids would never have been on the road if it wasn't for fracking. The truck full of fracking fluids would not exist, so anywhere along the supply chain line, trucking, pipelines, whatever, if it's not an issue that happens directly at the fracking well, okay, you cannot blame fracking if some stupid truck driver, pipeline operator, storage facility, an earthquake, a hurricane, a tsunami, a wildfire. It has nothing. That, that's not fracking. That is the supply chain infrastructure surrounding fracking. Don't blame that truck full of uh, fracking fluids getting dumped into a river on fracking. Nothing could be further from the truth. Thank you very much for that knee slapper. And guys, I could go on and on. We're just going to just go down the headlines. Uh, the U.S. faces solar coaster amid challenges in opportunities. The U.S. solar industry is set to be torn between huge opportunities and major 
stumbling blocks in the coming months and years. Here is talking about fossil fuel subsidies. Mexico may give Pemex yet another tax break. Mexico could further ease the fiscal burden on its state oil firm, Pemex. The world's most indebted oil company. Do you think so? Uh, all right. UK company looks to build Europe's largest battery. I love this one. Uh, this one might be in Saturdays. Elon Musk, you know, the world's richest man and Times Person of the Year. Elon Musk wants to turn CO2 into rocket fuel. SpaceX is launching a program to capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to suck out the CO2 from the atmosphere and turn it into rocket fuel to put the CO2 right back in the atmosphere where it came from. Okay, we have a deadline for Asia to quit coal. Yes. Uh-huh. Here is Permian merger mania. Permian merger mania heats up with the birth of a four billion dollar shale oil giant. You know, all of this stuff you're always hearing from those peak oilers about declining returns on oil wells. Well, according to this, uh, to this analysis, average production per U.S. oil rig has soared 81% since 2019. New well, now this is the catch-all, new well oil production per rig has gained some serious ground over the last three years, increasing nearly 85% since the start of 2019. Now, of course, what they don't mention in the article is how long those uh, gusher rates uh, stay before you start declining, which I'm sure Richard Heinberg would uh, would like you to know. Uh, Now, according to Global Platts analysis, the energy supply will catch up with demand in 2022, and that we're going to get a balanced market in 2022. Uh, you know, the thing I like about oil price is they do offer all size. They don't cherry pick. Uh, now, obviously, they want people to invest in fossil fuels, but they do a pretty good job of uh, giving the other side of the story. It's not totally one-sided. Uh, they are probably the most balanced. They're a hell of a lot more balanced than these bright green lie organizations much more balanced in their reporting, getting both sides of the story. Uh, Germany threatens to shutter Nord Stream in case of Ukraine escalation. Germany will freeze the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline in case of any escalation between Russia and Ukraine, the new German forest ministry said. 
There you go. All right. UK doubles down on wind and solar with more than $370 million in funding. There you go. Good for them. Uh, okay, we have some good news here. UK's Cambo oil field in the North Sea project put on hold after Shell's withdrawal. Uh, Yep, all right, a little bit of good news. All right, what's going on in Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia set to book its first budget surplus in 10 years as oil rises. There you go, Saudi Arabia putting money in the bank. Uh... All right, China presents plan to slash heavy metal emissions. This is the definition. What is your, what is your definition of the word slash? This is oilprice.com's definition of the word slash. Chinese Authorities recently presented a draft plan to reduce heavy metal emissions by 2025 by 5 percent. 5 percent. All right, talking about the polar vortex, potential polar vortex could send natural gas prices soaring again. We shall see. Yes, here we go. This is one for Saturday. Carbon capture innovations will play a key role in net zero ambitions. Mm -hmm. There you go. How volatile oil prices could spark conflict in South America. There you go. We can start drawing those dots. Wow. Oil prices rise is Omicrona panic. Fears fade. Oil markets are beginning to show signs of recovery following news that the demand impact of Omicron may not be as significant as originally feared. Yep, yep, yep. Wow. U.S. rig count tracks higher again on crude price recovery, the number of active drilling rigs in the United States this week rose by another seven, bringing the rig count to 576. Uh, oil prices rebound after Black Friday crash. Uh, and we're going to uh, leave you with a tip of how to make money off the collapse of a planet. Three stocks to watch as the lithium boom kicks into high gear. A boom in electric vehicles is expected to drive a phenomenal amount of demand for lithium and that is just the beginning yes it is uh, anyway guys anyone wanting to understand 
what's really going on in the oil markets. The bottom line being anybody suffering a delusion that fossil fuels are going anywhere minimally in the next 25 years. Uh, <laughs> dream on. Believe your bright green lies if you want to. It is business as usual on this planet on this gorgeous day. And speaking of this gorgeous day, I need to get out there and figure out what to do with this beautiful day. And I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy your 80 degree December day while you still can. Put on your Hawaiian shirt. Maybe we'll head to the beach. Bye, guys.